Hi everybody, it's Andy from Snow Camps Europe, back with Paul from the SIA Austria. And this podcast, we're talking about holiday accommodation and predominantly, should you stay in a hotel or should you go self-catering? Yeah, well, probably depends how much it's going to cost and what your budget is as <laughs> well. It's quite, a, quite an open-ended question, but we do get asked it a lot because obviously a lot of people you know, want to know, first of all, maybe should they go with a tour operator or should they be independently putting the package together? And, and when we say a tour operator, we don't just mean the big boys. Um, there's a lot of tour operators that run these very luxurious chalet catered type holidays, mm -hmm. etc. There's lots of options. And, you know, sometimes, Andy, it's actually cheaper to book a tour operator than it is to try and put the puzzle together yourself. So there are benefits to, to both sides, but it's it's flexibility, I think, because it, it changes, um, you know, throughout the season. It can be best to book a package sometimes and best not other times. Yeah, on, on the package thing, and I've looked into this a lot over the years, and I will quite often say to people, especially if they want to come to Caprun, book a package with Crystal because you get to the airport. For the minute you're at the airport, it's their responsibility to get you to the resort. It is normally cheaper than trying to do all of the different bits yourself. Um, and what I find normally kills it on the purse is the transfer from the airport. But if you book with someone like Crystal and you get your flight, you get your transfer, you get your hotel, which is you can choose whether it's a bed and breakfast or a half board, two star, four star, whatever you want, whatever fits your budget. But one of the biggest benefits is if your flight is late because of fog at Salzburg, let's say, the coach is going to be there. Your transfer will, be, transfer will be there when you land and they will get you to resort because that's, that's what you're paying them for. Where if you do it independently and you're coming from Stansted on Ryanair, let's say, and there's fog and you've got a two hour delay and you've booked a shared transfer with one of the providers, it ain't going to wait for you. It's gone with the people who were there. And you've then got a problem that you're at an airport, you possibly don't know how to get to the resort and you haven't got a rep mm. or someone on the end of the phone or an app, which is what some of these providers are now going to, to tell yeah. you, get yourself to the train station, get to Salem Z or do this or do that. Yeah. You know, um, so th I think <laughs> that's one of the benefits of a package. There are some downsides to a package, but that is one of the benefits. Yeah. And I think the, 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 the downside, the, the con for me is people. Yeah, if you the, go with a tour people. operator, you've got you've got other people. You're a group again. Um, what I prefer to do, no matter where I go, and not just skiing, I would always go for the the op the option of car rental mm -hmm. at the airport. Um, yes, I'm going to pay a premium compared with Crystal, but yeah. I've got full flexibility. I can fly to Munich now. I can fly to Salzburg. Um, that's going to save me money. And secondly, car rental, especially if you go to Munich, car rental is cheap. And it gives me the flexibility in resort then not to have to do the bus crappy things or, you know, do anything where I'm having to go with other people in, in a bus or a car or whatever. Um, so that's what I do first. And then I select whatever hotel or, or bed, breakfast, pension you want to do. And again, it's budget reliant, isn't it? Because some people look at a ski holiday and they're not necessarily counting every euro. Nope. And then other people are yep. they're counting every single euro and it's that balance i mean the the great thing coming on a ski holiday let's say to somewhere like austria is i feel austria gets the benefits of the the switzerland france italy style accommodation and uh, um, ski resorts but at a cheaper price than, than having to go to bulgaria or, yeah. or, or somewhere like that where it's like yeah it's going to be cheap but it's also going to be horrible yeah. so i think austria is a great balance because especially if you're going to eat on the slopes Austria has, I think, a much, um, uh, I wouldn't say cheaper, I would just say better, pff, cheaper more, as well. more affordable more affordable and better quality than many of the others I have found. Yes. Yeah. Um, but that's selling maybe Austria a bit. Yeah. We're not here to do that. We're talking about what to do when you get here. Yeah. And for, for my side, I think people have to understand that my experience before being a professional skier was that if I went on holiday and I stayed in the holiday hotels, wherever, I just found the quality of evening meals very 
floating up and down. You just didn't know what you were going to get. And I would always have preferred to have the flexibility to eat out. Now, a lot of hotels won't give you that. You know, even if you ring up and say, um, I just want bed and breakfast in your hotel, they'll go, oh, well, we'll re reduce your overall cost by 10 euros for the week. It's mm -hmm. something ridiculous. And you think, well, what's, it's not worth it. I might as well eat at the hotel. And almost forcing you to have that half board package. Whereas, you know, you want to experience the town a bit. And you want to go to the restaurants in the town, especially you know, the ones that have a reputation as being good. And that's, that's stole away from you. But nowadays, because there are some awesome apartments, quality apartments, that have a, a restaurant so you can have breakfast with them, for yep. example, and set you up for the day, and don't force you to, to even a meal there, mm -hmm. I think they're the better options nowadays. Yeah, I, think, I think the more, more apart hotels, I think is what yeah. they call them, don't they? Yeah. And, um, you'll get the benefit of all of the hotel facilities. So you may even get pools, saunas, saunas spas yeah. and everything. But you, you are literally, you've got a kitchen also in your apartment. So you can do your- Even a washing your, machine sometimes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but pretty much home from home. Um, but you've got the, the benefit of, if you want to go down for breakfast, you can go down for breakfast. In some of them, if you want to go down for dinner, you can pay for your dinner as an extra, or you can go out or you can stay in. Now for me, I, I normally do a self catering, but I'll only really cater for my breakfast and maybe my lunch if I'm there at lunchtime. Cause again, I want to go out and I want to experience the town, the town, the village, whether it's a ski resort or if it's a summer, a summer um, trip to yeah. let's say um, Garda, I want to go out and eat the local food in different restaurants and different ambience rather than sitting in a hotel yeah. with the same people on the table next to me who inevitably <laughs> want to talk to you and ask, where are you from and what do you do? And Andy, and, that's you. You're that well, guy on the table next to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one asking the questions. <laughs> I, I think I agree that that's right. I mean, from my experience, and I don't want to sound snobby, but if you are going on a holiday and it's a high quality five star hotel you're booked into for your ski holiday, you're probably going to get a cracking, like, you know, a cracking service, a really good deal. But as soon as you get into a lower starred hotel, I would opt then for the apart hotel and go to an apartment that that's a higher quality and probably price wise, it probably matches like a, a two or three star hotel because generally it's two or three star for a reason. And it's usually the foods. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, I think the food is the controllable where they can they can save some money because obviously the room is the room. Yeah. Um, so you you are going to expect the food to be the differentiation from place to place. I, like yourself, have stayed in a fair few fancy hotels um, with exceptional service. But again, I quite often after a day or two decide to go and eat out because it's quite yeah. often it's quite often big plate small portion <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> you know? and even though the food is very very nice michelin star quality yeah. i quite like a big plate of food yeah they make this mistake of not realizing that when they've been sat at the hotel you've been out skiing all day and freezing cold and you've come back and yeah they'll put on the little cake and whatever when you get back in but you just want mountains of yeah. nice big food and okay you want it healthy you want it nice but it needs to be mountains of it and i've been in those hotels where you feel like at the end of it you're having to stuff more bread and cheese in your face just yeah. to like fill up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need you need fuel you need to refuel for the next day because skiing burns off a lot of calories um so yeah, yeah i suppose the other thing with the self-catering is if i'm if i was traveling from england on a ski holiday i probably wouldn't go self-catering because I don't want to carry my shopping around a village in the no, snow. But self-catering doesn't necessarily mean you're going to... No, you, you can, you self -catering. Gotta, Exactly, yeah. I don't. I mean, we stayed in some places in Iceland there that were self-catered, but we just went out yeah. and didn't really use the kitchen. But it's nice to have it there if you want to make some toast or a coffee or yeah. a little snack. Um, I, I really think... You, on a ski holiday, it's hard because I know a lot of people with families have to plan. They, they don't have the flexibility to go, let's just hang around and see where the snow is, see where the best deals are, etc. You're stuck with going, oh, I've got to go those two sudden week in February when everybody else is going, I've got to pay a premium for it. And then hotels start to look expensive. But equally, so is the crappy little pension becomes expensive. Yeah. And everybody's getting I don't want to say ripped off, but that's because ski resorts are trying to make their money in a very small window frame. So if you're not got that flexibility to come any time and you're stuck with peak seasons, then it, it, it is hard to make the decision as to whether to go hotel or self-catered. But I think we all, we generally think we want 
to experience the town. We do want to get out, have a meal, but be aware that that can be a bit stressful as well if you're not booked into a hotel. Because sometimes if you're not actually going to reserve a table ahead, yeah. especially if you're a family of six or you're at two families together and suddenly you're at 10, you can forget it. You know, you're going to be eating at four o'clock at night to try and fit into the timetable of the ski resort that's yeah. fully booked at seven and eight o'clock at night. That can be stressful for people. So some people may just want to stay in the hotel, you know, 90% of the time because it's a given. And I suppose you can always complain about the food, but the hotel works on like a week's menu, don't they? And these yep. ski resorts, you know, you know, every Monday it's the same. Every Saturday it's the same. I mean, Andy and I have been here long enough to know that, you know, guests invite us out and you go out and it's it's the same food the year before as well. <laughs> it's like, it's, you know what you're going to get every single time. Um, and it, it's hard because you, you were talking to me there, Andy, off, off air, and you were mentioning a, a good hotel here. Really nice people who run it, really good service, really nice modern rooms, etc. And then, the, it's not that they let themselves down with the food, Quite the opposite. They're trying too hard. Yeah, it's a little bit too... Um, Over the top. Fine dining. <laughs> yes. It's a little bit too much fine dining, yeah. 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 Whereas, like Andy says, sometimes, you know, the schnitzel and chips is why you've come to Austria or the big apple pie at the end. Or I don't know what you want. So I get that. And, and I think people are obviously coming on a holiday. Some people see a holiday as the whole, um, the whole experience, the airport getting a business class flight, whatever it might be, and arriving and being, you know, somebody opening the door for you. And yeah. that's, that's their idea of a holiday. And some people really couldn't care. They're here because they just want to get on the slopes and they don't really care where they're staying over. Yeah. And, and, and again, um, I think, what, what, what is the reason for your holiday? If it's just to ski, then I, I'll, I'll sleep anywhere. You know, yeah. um, you want a comfortable bed and a clean yeah. bathroom. Yeah. And that's, that's, it. that's, you know, the difference we, we, we use a lot of luxury accommodation here in Capron on our courses, but we also have more basic accommodation, but the basic accommodation has to be clean. Yep. It has to have a good bathroom and it has to have a bed that you can sleep on, you know? And I think one thing that winds me up and I never, ever go really anywhere during the season because I'm obviously working here, but oh, ski hotels generally are should be called ski saunas for some oh, reason they think warm. that yeah. why do they want to put first every single heating on in the whole bloody place after you've been out minus 10 all day and then you're coming into plus 27 and then they give you a duvet that feels like it's a i don't know like a line of cement on you yeah. i get the idea i love something heavier lying on your head but at the same <laughs> time it's like jesus christ this duvet what am i going to do with it and you just end up pushing it off yeah. and and the windows are like open, open yeah. all night yeah. and it, it's the most ridiculous thing ever and i think Everybody complains about it. You think the hotel will go, oh, great. I don't have to switch my heating up so yeah, much. Sure. I can actually okay. save some money. Yeah, first thing I would do is, uh, upon checking, go to the room, open the balcony window, tilt it open, yeah. and go, right, now I'm going out, and I'm going to leave that open so the room is cold when I come in, yeah. and then it would gradually warm up through the night, but it would be bearable. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that from the sports science side, which is where I specialize in. And, you know, sleeping is so important. You know, that people... Yeah. And, and the sleeping temperature, the ideal temperature is between 16 and 18 degrees you know and most people sleep in temperatures way too high but on ski resorts i just find it insane yeah. like absolutely insane and they think it's somehow warmly and welcoming when you go in the room <laughs> it's like, jesus christ what are you doing to us you know i'll tell you anything you want just switch the temperature down <laughs> so yeah and i think the it's the combination of what is the purpose of the holiday and of course if you're dragging a family with you you've got you know i don't know a couple of kids and stuff like that it gets expensive in hotels as well you lose a bit of the flexibility some hotels aren't friendly towards the kids because they don't really want them running around and things yeah. you know so you've got that balance as well you really need to educate yourself which hotel is is going to be friendly towards that and then of course some people do want the spa the sauna etc which i get and it's great to have those facilities again when perhaps the hotel is at half to three quarter capacity but i find again those facilities are a nightmare when hotels are full Packed, yep. you know i was in whistler in the fairmont there and it's a leading hotel in the world and i remember i'd been one year and it was it was awesome like everything was great went back the following year at some point and it was it was full chocker mm. forget the spa it was horrendous it was like being in butlin's holiday camp in the 70s or something <laughs> you know it, been, there. <laughs> been there done that yeah. you know it was it was a nightmare and that was a luxury hotel so yeah. 
I think it is all down to when you're coming as well. And that's why, you know, we, we used to always travel when I was a recreational skier. My favourite week was always that, like, 8th of January. Yeah, first Saturday after New Year. Yeah, yeah. it was like you got the best service, the best price, the best snow. The Empty best. slopes. <laughs> Empty slopes. It's yeah. a great time to come. And, you know, I know many of you can't wait to get rid of the kids when they're older so you can revisit that type of skiing because skiing through February and times like that, it doesn't really matter where you are, it can be, it can be challenging yeah. at the least, you know. I suppose one of the things, Paul, that we should say is that if people are thinking of coming to Gaprom, whether they're coming to do a, a course or they're coming on a holiday, then they are not they, they don't quite know what we have here in Gaprun is they can always ask us if they want to know our opinion on an apartment yeah. building or on a hotel or they want to tell us exactly what they want from their holiday then come to us we've both been here for multiple years we know the accommodations we know the owners we know what they offer we know what they don't offer so we can advise you on the way to and stay. yeah I mean in fairness we can talk about other places you know obviously I've skied oh. the world I've been to most resorts I've, I've checked them out and that's my job to do that so <laughs> You know, just because we're based out in Europe somewhere, that's that's our base. But at the same time, you know, we're used to traveling, we're used to seeing other places and the benefits and the pros. You know, we've talked before about the difference between should you do Canada, should you do Europe mm -hmm. on one of the podcasts. And it's it's those sort of conversations that may be helpful to people committing. And I would say the average family is probably spending, what, between five and six grand if they're coming on a decent ski holiday. Easily, yeah. You know, so it's a lot of money to commit. And you don't want to go home and feel like you've been cheated really because yeah. i have no problem with paying for service sometimes but sometimes if you don't get that service i've got a problem then you know you, yeah, you feel sure. cheated you feel frustrated because you've paid so much um uh, yeah so you know going back in a full circle we, we probably not really answered the question as such as to whether you should be booking a hotel self-catered i think it's um you've got to be very cautious when booking a hotel because it's fixed everything is fixed they've got a way of doing things and it's either very very good that they're very good at what they do and they've reacted to their feedback and they continue strongly to improve their services and it's a great hotel fine fine if you want to pay that money go that way yep. the flexibility of being in a self-catered or in a part style hotel yep. can also be beneficial because many ski resorts are modernizing you know we since i've been in capron area you've seen it go from two star to five star you yep. know when it's accommodation and um, it's developed its gondola systems it's now got doorstep skiing basically yep. into the uh, onto a glacier and um, the need for buses moving around less the accommodation quality with so many builders coming in and building the these really flash apartments yeah um it, it's just incredible more restaurants more restaurants if you, if, you, if you count the restaurants that were here when you and i got here and you count the restaurants now you need more hands yeah you know and there's more there's more there's yeah. another one about to open again uh, and then they're, they're, they're more european um in a sense of saying there's a lot of um i would say like a dutch influence here where the quality of that food they're bringing in is high fresh um, yes, you're going to pay in those sort of places. I would say, I don't know how much it costs for a meal in England, or for example, but you're going to pay normal European city prices then. Yeah. But equally, you can get something cheaper, the Avina Schnitzel and chips from a, a, a more standard restaurant, if that's what you want to want to eat. So the flexibility is there. And that's that's a case in most resorts as well now. I see it's, it's, it's de development, basically, isn't it? People have invested a lot into ski resorts because they see it as a great way to uh, to make money as a business. Yeah, to take money off people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so whether we answered it or not, Andy, I don't know. But uh, that's another one done. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.